my sophomore year, uh, myself and a, and a senior at the time who was a biology concentrator, we started the Harvard Undergraduate Beekeepers Club. And since then we've grown, we now have eight hives instead of one. And this observation hive is probably the, the thing that I've been most excited about my whole undergraduate experience. There always seems to be an extreme adventure to be had when you're when you're dealing with bees. I was a uh, a little junior scientist at age seven, I guess, and uh, you know the, a butterfly net was my most prized possession. Ultimately, um, I came across the honeybee at maybe around age twelve, and I have been studying honeybees, you know, on my own my entire life. Bees have been able to take care of themselves for millions of years and so really an observation hive is, is there to just watch the processes. They were here. <laughs> There's really very little that we need to do um, in terms of day-to-day -day care or even, you know, month to month. In a few days, um, the bees will sort of do some orientation flights and um, they'll send out some scout bees and sooner or later they'll find um, some pollen and nectar that's in a tree or some flowering plant nearby. And that will start the process of scout bees coming back to the hive. The, the most fascinating thing about bees is what they can accomplish given that they're really pretty simple insects. As a hive, the structures that they can build and the amount that they can produce is pretty incredible. The queen has a blue dot and she's a little bit larger than all the rest of the other bees. Um, she's responsible for pretty much everything in the hive, not only laying but also producing pheromones that sort of direct all of the other worker bees. Um, then the brood is the sort of bumpy looking capped over um, cells, they, it tends to be darker than the honey cells um, and that's, that's where all of the, I mean that's, those are the eggs and the larvae and then the, the developing bees. The pollen and honey stores are of course all of their food. Um, the pollen is going to be different colors depending on the season um, which flowers they're harvesting from and it, it tends to be sort of sunken into some of the cells. And then the honey, um, sometimes if you look into cells you can see it looks watery, that's nectar that hasn't been turned into honey yet, and then the honey will be capped over with uh, very light wax on the top, and that tends to be around the top of different frames. Um, so that's, that's crucial for them to making it through the winter, especially they need to store it, so then they have food when there are no flowers. Beekeeping has this common language, and it's, it's an art form in and of itself, I think. 